Hello, I'm Pastor Jackson from True Life Baptist Church in Edmonton. We've been trying to answer the question, what is a Baptist? We're trying to answer this question using the letters of the word Baptists, B-A-P-T-I-S-T-S. -T -T Today we want to look at the letter I and see how that can help us to understand what is a Baptist. The letter I deals with individual soul liberty, and Baptists have historically stood for the liberty of the individual and that has caused grief to many over the years and yet it is a precious truth that we do believe and hold dear to ourselves. There are two different aspects to this individual soul liberty that I think are interesting for us to consider. First, Individual soul liberty tells us that no one may be coerced to follow God. This is true in salvation. This is true for believers. No one can be coerced to follow God. We see the prime example of this in Adam and Eve. As they were in the garden, they were not forced to follow God, nor were they forced to rebel against God they had individual soul liberty. They were able to make a conscious choice whether or not they would follow God. It's sad that they did choose to disobey God. Nonetheless, that was their individual choice to do that. History is filled with examples of religious coercion, whether it is some Christian denomination or some other religion that is coercing people to become followers of that particular religion. While that is true in history, Baptists have always opposed this sort of coercion. Each individual is responsible before God to know Him and to serve Him according to God's Word. The coercion of religion is the opposite of what the Word of God teaches and is certainly the opposite of what God seeks. God wants you to choose on your own to love Him, to follow Him, to obey Him. That's individual soul liberty. And the other aspect of individual soul liberty is not only do you have a choice uh, that no one can coerce you to follow God, but also no one else can answer for your choices. We see that again with Adam and Eve. They made a choice not to obey God, and they were the ones who suffered the consequences for that choice. They were responsible. Later we see the Apostle Paul talking about his choice to follow God and to obey God throughout his life. And he was the one who would bear uh, the reward really for making that particular choice. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, in verses 7 and 8, we find Paul saying, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul is saying, I have made the conscious decision to obey God, and I myself am going to receive the rewards for that. Every individual will stand before God to answer for his or her own choices, whether those choices are good or whether those choices are bad. Romans chapter 14 and verse 12 tells us, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So when we're talking about individual soul liberty, what we're saying is, no one can coerce you to follow God and obey God, nor can anyone coerce you to disobey God. But at the same time, no one else is going to answer for you before God. If you've obeyed God in coming to Jesus Christ for salvation, you will reap the reward of eternal life. If you have obeyed God as a Christian, you will reap rewards for that faithful Christian life. But if you have chosen to disobey God as a Christian, you'll lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. If you have, of your own free will, chosen to not accept Christ as your only hope for salvation, you yourself will bear the reward for that, which is a sad and a terrible reward in hell for all of eternity. I don't want that for you. 
but I cannot make that choice for you. I can only tell you that choice needs to be made. I can only encourage you to make that choice because you have individual soul liberty. So this is an important thing to understand that we all enjoy individual soul liberty and that we're free to choose whether or not to know God, whether or not to follow God, but we're not free to evade the consequences of those choices. I hope that that helps you understand a little bit more about what it is to be a Baptist. If you'd like more information, please visit our website. If you have further questions, please be sure to contact us. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to help you in your walk with God today.